Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, have you ever uh, watched the television reality show uh, Shark Tank? For those of you who may not be familiar with that program, well, the show features aspiring entrepreneur contestants who, who make a pitch before a panel of shark investors, hoping, of course, that the investors will invest in their business idea that they bring before them. Well, today I decided to step into the shark tank, if you will, and I'd like to pitch an idea before you all. You see, I have come up with an idea which I believe will help Christians like us to more easily share our faith with others. Sound intriguing to you? You know, when it, it comes to sharing the Christian faith, I think one of the biggest obstacles that we as God's people encounter is that of, of simply bringing up the subject, right? I mean, how do you start a, a conversation about the gospel? That, uh, have you found in your life, as I have found in my life, can be a, a hard thing to do. So, Here's the idea I'd like to pitch before you. You ready for it? Yeah. I call it my conversation starter t-shirt. So what do you think? Are you willing to get out your checkbooks, your pocketbooks here today to invest so that I can make a, a bunch of these t-shirts so that Christians can go out and wear them and share the good news of salvation with others? Okay, you're a little hesitant. Uh, I know how this works, though. I've watched the program a few times. You've got questions, don't you? Like, to begin with, uh, what's that supposed to mean? A, a T-shirt with the word, therefore, on it? Well, I, I'm glad you asked the question, because that's the whole point, you see, of this T-shirt. It's intended to be, to be cryptic like that, so that people... Well, they'll come and ask you about it. Curious friends, acquaintances, why even total strangers on the street will ask, why do you have the word therefore on your shirt? And friends, when they do that, well, well that then gives you the opportunity to speak to them about one of the most powerful words found in Scripture. And why, you might be asking, is therefore one of the most powerful words found in Scripture? Because. Because it connects. It connects what proceeds to what follows. And you know, Holy Scripture is full of these therefore statements that connect what proceeds to what follows. For instance... Romans chapter 1, there the Apostle Paul lays out a long list of sinful behaviors. This list, it runs the gamut from the, from the most despicable behaviors imaginable to more, what shall we say, socially acceptable things that many people find themselves doing routinely. And Paul's point is that, hey, you're going to find yourself, every one of us, everyone is going to find themselves someplace in that long list of sins. And then comes the therefore. In Romans chapter 2, verse 1, Paul writes, Therefore, you have no excuse. You see it? You see how this t-shirt uh, can get you talking to others about the fact that the Bible declares that we are all sinners. Everyone falls short of the glory of God no matter how good we might think we look in comparison to others. Hey, and if the person uh, tries to weasel out of that and says, okay, yeah, maybe I gossip a bit, and yes, I can be rude at times, 
but the people deserve it anyway. And golly, at least I go to church and I contribute to some of my income to ministry causes. Shouldn't that count for something? Again, you can point them back to the t-shirt and share with them that since we cannot keep God's commands perfectly, as we should, well, therefore. Therefore, as the Bible says, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by observing the law. You see how this is working? How that word, therefore, can get the conversation started and going. Hey, I'm thinking we could go beyond t-shirts here. I'm thinking we could go to, to other visible items like that of hats and handbags, koozies, and so forth, and, and get everybody talking. Of course, being told that, you know, you're a sinner and that there is nothing that you can do to save yourself well, that isn't very comforting news, is it? So friends, the idea here is to move the, the conversation toward the greatest therefore of all. That is the good news that is found in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for through his perfect life and death and resurrection why Jesus did for us and for all the people what we are unable to do for ourselves. He rescued us from the wrath and punishment of God we deserve on account of our sins. And because, because he did all of that, therefore, as Romans chapter 8 assures us, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Can you see it? Can you see how this t-shirt might help us Christians share the gospel with others? So what do you think? Are, are you willing to invest in my conversation starter t-shirt? Boy, by the look on your faces, I don't think so. Well, actually, to tell you the truth, I'm not looking for investors. No, actually, my friends, what I want to talk to you about today is a, another kind of investment, if you will. It's about investing, no, not your money, but everything. I mean everything, your entire life into that relationship which your Lord God desires to have with you. And why, you might be asking, would you want to do that? Well, well, because today in our epistle reading, we encountered another therefore. Did you notice it? It was right there in chapter 12, verse 1, where Paul writes, I appeal to you therefore by the mercies of God. Folks, in that short verse, Paul is giving us the reason why we should give ourselves wholly and completely to the Lord God. It is because of everything Paul had just explained there in Romans in chapters 1 through 11, namely that we are saved by grace alone, through faith and alone. Why? Because of Christ alone. The word, therefore, connects. Connects what proceeds, namely God's mercy toward us in Christ, to what is to follow. And what is to follow is a changed life. Yes, God's mercy in Christ Jesus, it creates in us a new life, a new life, a changed life, if you will. But you know, sometimes we Christians overlook that, therefore, in our lives, don't we? 
In other words, well, we know all about God's mercy and we bask in it as we should. His forgiveness and salvation for us sinners. But then we often forget that there is a new life that is to come forth from that forgiveness and salvation which we have received. And Paul, thankfully, he describes for us how we live that new life in Christ here in Romans chapter 12. And I'd like to take a closer look at at just some of the words, some of the language that Paul uses. First of all, he uses this word sacrifice. You know, back in biblical times, there were two categories of sacrifices. There were the, the mandatory ones, and there were then the, well, the voluntary ones. The mandatory sacrifices, well, they had to do with payment for sin. But friends, when the Apostle Paul encourages us here to present our bodies as living, a living sacrifice, he's not referring to that type of sacrifice, that first one there. And how do we know that? Because Jesus, as we are reminded all over Scripture and in places like the book of Hebrews, Jesus was our once and for all sacrifice when he died on the cross in our place. No, the sacrifice Paul is referring to here in Romans chapter 12 is not the mandatory offering for sin. Rather, it's the voluntary one. An example of that kind of sacrifice would be that of what they called the whole burnt offering, where one would take uh, an expensive animal from their flock, that is an animal that had no defects, and then the entire animal, all of it would be burned, which indicated that all you had, all you had was at God's disposal. It was an act of worship there in the Old Testament that expressed one's total devotion and complete commitment to God. It illustrated how God is worthy of our very best, not simply our leftovers. And you know, my friends, because of the grace and mercy which God has shown to each and every one of us in His Son, Jesus Christ, we, we now have the joy, the privilege, as well as the responsibility to offer ourselves to God as living sacrifices in thanksgiving for what God in His grace has done for us. In addition to this term, this word sacrifice, another word that Paul uses is that of body. As he says here, present your bodies as living sacrifices. You're not to present a dead animal, no, but rather your living body. Sin. Sin in the human heart, have you ever noticed eventually it manifests itself uh, through the body? (laughs) In that way, it's kind of like cancer. It starts in one location, but then it just spreads everywhere. As it manifests itself, sin in the body, what do we got? Tongues that that practice deceit. We end up with lips that spread poisonous uh, words or gossip. Mouths that are full of cursing and bitterness. Feet that are quick to rush into evil. Hands that that shed innocent blood. Eyes that, that look away from God. And so forth. Ah, but friends, in light of all that God has done for us in Christ Jesus, our bodies no longer need to be controlled by sin like that. Rather, by God's grace and strength, we can control our bodies. Instead of using them as instruments of wickedness, we can now offer the the different parts of our bodies to God as, as instruments of righteousness. 
that is feet that, that walk in his ways, lips that speak his truth and, and spread the gospel, tongues that bring healing, hands that, that lift up those who have fallen, arms that embrace the lonely and the unloved, ears that listen for the cries of the distressed, and eyes that, that look humbly and patiently toward the Lord. In other words, our bodies will show forth. They will act in accordance to the faith that God has placed here in our hearts. Finally, a, another term which Paul uses to describe this changed life of the Christian is the word transformation. Paul, you know, he holds up for us here two different ways or patterns of, of living one's life here on this earth when he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Be transformed. You know, we human beings, we seem to be what they call imitative people by nature. In other words, we tend to look to some sort of model uh, of which to, to copy and, and then live by. Hey, that's why the job of parenting is so important. Uh, your children are watching you. This is why advertising and marketing can be so powerful in our culture and why people tend to follow the, the lead of their, their favorite hero or celebrity. However, my friends, in the end, in the end, there are really only two models or value systems that exist. You've got that of the prevailing culture, right? Which the Bible, by the way, often refers to as the world. And then you have that of God's holy and perfect will. And even though Many of us may not like to hear this. I got to tell you, the sad fact is, those two sets of standards, they diverge so widely, so completely, that there is no possibility of compromise between the two of them. So how do we avoid conforming to the patterns of this world, this world which, by the way, is passing away and be transformed to hold to that which shall never pass away. Well, Paul, he tells us here in this text, doesn't he? He says, by the renewal of your mind. Renewal. Renewal, you know, that is the work of God, the Holy Spirit, in our lives. And that renewal, for many of us sitting here today, well, that took, why that took place right there at the baptismal font. There at our baptism, when the Holy Spirit used water, connected it with God's promise, and through that water, joined us to Christ, our Lord and Savior. And friends, that renewal, it continues on in our lives. It continues to take place as we avail ourselves to God's word and sacrament, which the Holy Spirit uses to nourish and strengthen us in the faith so that we can discern in our lives what the will of God is. And not only discern it, but to live and act according to it. So in closing, uh, allow me, if you will, to share one more therefore with you. It comes to us from Hebrews chapter 2. In light of the fact that, that God primarily communicates to us, his people today, through his word that is preached here in worship, his word that is studied in, in Bible classes, his word which is meditated upon in our devotions. Therefore, 
Therefore, my friends, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. And may we never drift away from it, but rather allow it, as God intends, to keep us in that one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.